Hello everyone. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at the perimeter and area of four different shapes. Those are going to be a square, a rectangle, a rhombus, and a parallelogram. So let's first talk about this word perimeter. Okay, many of you watching this probably know this already, but let's just go through it. So the perimeter, if you talk about the perimeter of a shape, it's the distance on the outside. So let's say, for example, this shape over here on the left is your swimming pool. Let's say it's your swimming pool, okay? And your swimming pool is in the shape of a square. So what we should know about a square is that all four sides have the same length, okay? See that? So I only needed to give you one of the lengths and the other three sides have to be the same because it's a square. So if I, saw, if I told you, walk around the distance of the pool, or walk around the pool and measure the length, you would say 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. And so that would be 12. We call that the perimeter. I'm just going to use a little P for short. So that is perimeter. It's the distance on the outside. Okay. If I had a random line going through the middle over here, you wouldn't count that for the perimeter because the perimeter is only on the outside. Now we're going to look at area. Area is all of this stuff. Area is all of this on the inside. Okay? Think about it. Think about what the word area means. If we're looking at a rugby field, for example, you could say that the rugby field has a really large area, okay? Or maybe you're looking at a new house and you can say that the lounge has a large floor area. So area is not on the outside, it's all the stuff on the inside. And so how do we work out the area of a square? Well, let me show you exactly how this works, okay? Just for the first one. So we've got three units going for this length over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it three blocks. And so there you can see I've made it one, two, three. Now I'm also going to do the same going down this side. I'm going to make it three blocks going across. What I then want you to do is count the number of blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now this makes sense. There's three rows going upwards and three rows going to the side. So to work out the total number of rows, you could just multiply the three times three. Because guys, you don't wanna to have to draw blocks like that. Maybe like in grade three, you could have done that. But in grade nine, you don't wanna to have to draw blocks. It's not always gonna work out so nicely because sometimes they're gonna give you a 100 as the length. And now you can't sit in the exam and draw a 100 blocks. All right, so if we know that this is three and three, to work out the area, which is all of this stuff for a square, you'll say three times three. And so the area is going to be nine. Now let's say that this was, I should have given us some units. Maybe this was in meters, then you'd say 12 meters over here. And for area, because you're using, because you're multiplying two of them, you're going to say m to the power of two. So nine meters squared. So let's quickly try this one on the right. To work out the perimeter, you would just say 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. Or you could say 5 times 4, and that's going to give us 20 meters. Let's say that that's meters. Then for the area, we know that that's just going to be this 5 times by this 5. And so area is going to be 5 times 5, which is 25. I know your teacher might give you these fancy formulas that you should use, but it's really good if you just understand what you are doing, so you don't have to memorize formulas the whole time. All right, moving on to a rectangle. So a rectangle is very similar to a square, but not all of the sides are the same. But what we do know for a rectangle is that the opposite sides are the same. So this one will be 6 and this one will be 3. And so to work out the perimeter, remember you just add all of the outside parts together. So the perimeter will be 6 plus 6 plus 3 plus 3. Your teacher might say 6 times 2 plus 3 times 2. The reason is, is that there's two of these threes and there's two sixes. Okay, but you don't have to do it like that. You can actually do it however you want, as long as you understand what you're doing. And that's going to give us 18 meters. I keep forgetting to write the units here. And then for the area, you can use the same approach as we did for the square. For example, if we have six units going to the side, we can make six blocks. 
and then we can make three rows going down. And if you had to count the number of blocks, you would see that there is, just think about this carefully, guys. If you really, if you think about this carefully, how many are there at the top here? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, how many of those rows are there going to be? There will be three of those rows. So we could say six times three, right? And so to find the area of a rectangle, you just say this number multiplied by this number. And so the area would be six times three, which is 18 meters squared. Don't worry about the fact that these are both 18. That sometimes happens, but it doesn't always happen. Okay, moving on to the example on the right-hand side. Well, this is very easy. We know how to do this by now. So if we had to go work out the perimeter, you would just say eight plus eight plus four plus four, and that's gonna give you 24 meters. Then for the area, we know that that's just eight multiplied by four, and that's gonna give us 32 meters squared. So you can see the way to work out the area and the perimeter of a square and a rectangle is pretty much the same. Now moving on to a rhombus, which is like a square, but it's been moved over to the side. Now, because it's the same as a square that's just been moved over, all of the lengths of a rhombus are the same. That's something important you need to know. Write it down on a piece of paper, put it on your wall in your bedroom, look at it every day so that you don't forget these different properties. Rectangles and squares are easy, but as we start getting to a rhombus, it starts getting a little bit more difficult to remember. So to work out the perimeter, that's very easy. Three plus three plus three plus three plus three. Or we can just say three times four, and that's gonna give us 12, right? It's just the distance on the outside, so three plus three, plus another three, and plus another three. Now the area, ah, this is where things get a bit interesting. For a square and a rectangle, we would have just said three times three. But this shape is a little bit skew, it's tilted, and so we're not going to do that. What we need for a rhombus is the height. Now, you might be saying, Kevin, the height is three. No, it's not, that height is not three. The height is this part over here. You see, from the top straight down to the bottom. It mustn't go like this at an angle. We don't want that height. We want the height from the top to the bottom. And so they would have to give you that length or somehow you would be able to work it out using Pythagoras, which I'll show you in videos later on. And so let's say this length is two. So then to work out the area of a rhombus, now this is important guys, pay attention. It's the base length times by the height. And so the base, for example, could be three and the height is the two. The height is not the three, okay? It must be, the, or the base and the height must be 90 degrees to each other. See that? 90 degrees to each other, okay? And so that's gonna be three times two, which is six, and let's say it was meters. So it would be meters to the power of two. So moving on to this example here on the right-hand side, We've got, we know that it's a rhombus, and so all four sides must be the same. And so to work out the perimeter, you could just say six plus six plus six plus six, or you could say six times four, and that's gonna give you 24 meters. Let's say that it was in meters. Then the area is not going to be six times six. Please remember that, guys. Your area must always be from the top straight down to the bottom. Sometimes in a test, they'll even give you the height like this. They'll give it to you on the outside of the shape as a dotted line. And some students, they're like, Kevin, how can they give us the height if it's on the outside of the shape? Guys, it doesn't matter if this four is over here or if I show you over here. These two would be the same height, okay? And so the area of that shape would be six times four which is 24 meters squared. And once again, don't worry about the fact that these two numbers are the same. That sometimes happens, but most times it doesn't. Moving on to the last shape for this lesson, and that is the parallelogram. So the parallelogram is like a rhombus mixed with a rectangle. So the rhombus part, I say that because it's tilted to the side, but then the rectangle part is because the lengths are different. Now, with a parallelogram, the opposite sides have the same length. 
Okay, and so to work out the perimeter, super easy, right? That's going to be 3 plus 10 plus 10 plus 3, and that's going to give us 26 meters. To work out the area, once again, we're going to use the base length multiplied by the height. And remember, the height never looks like that. The height is always from the top down to the bottom, like that, as a straight or, and it must always make 90 degrees with your base. And so let's say that that length is 2. So the area is going to be the base length, which is 10, multiplied by the height length, which is 2. And guys, when you use the base length, you could have even used this 10 up here. It doesn't have to be the one at the bottom. Okay, and so that would give us 20 meters squared. Moving on to the last little part of today's lesson, or this lesson, sorry, you might be watching more than one. Um, let's look at the perimeter. So for the perimeter, that's going to be 4 plus 1 plus 4 plus 1, because this side over here is 4 and this side over here is 1. And if you go add that up, you're going to get 10 meters. Then to work out the area, we would need the base length, which is 4, because that's this one. But then you would need the height. And so they would either give it to you maybe like this, and they'll say that that's a 2. No, not a 2. It would be like 0, 0,5. And they would give you this one maybe, or they would give it to you over here. Or, as we said in the previous example, they could even give it to you on the outside. As long as it's going from the top straight down to the bottom where it's making a 90 degree angle with the bottom like that, or with the top. Okay, can you see that? And so let's say that the height is 0 0.5. And so you'd say 4 times 0 0.5, and that would give you 2 meters squared. So in summary, the main things that I want you to remember from this lesson is that the perimeter is on the outside. Now, for a square, the area is always going to be this one multiplied by this one. So you just multiply the two sides together. For a rectangle, and notice that that's 90. For a rectangle, it's also 90 degrees. And so you just multiply the 4 and the 3. But then when we start getting to shapes that are slanted, or like going off to the side, like a rhombus, then when you find the area, you must not say 3 times 2. Because look at these two. They're not 90 degrees. Can you see that? You always want to use the 90 degrees when finding your area. And so instead, you would use the base of 3, for example, and then they would give you a height. And so now we can see here, it's a 90 degree. You always want the 90 degree. And then for, oh, that's actually a parallelogram, sorry, because this length and this length is different. If it was a rhombus, those lengths would be the same. It would be like a 5 and then a 5 over here. Now, when you are finding the area of a shape like that, which is slanted, notice that this angle here is not 90 degrees, then you mustn't say 5 times 5 for your area. What you do instead is you can use the 5, the base, but then what you need is a 90 degree. So you need the 90 degree height. See there? And then let's say that that length was 3. Then your area is 5 times 3. Hope that that makes sense, guys. Thank you very much for watching.